planning and execution. Something that I've learned in all of my career in terms of recruiting and sales is you must have a defined process. You must treat it like a system. 20, 7, 3, and 1. Line up 20 prospects, reach out to all of them. You'll probably connect with seven, interview with three, and land one. You can constantly fill your funnel throughout that process, but remember those numbers. Just like Jim Rohn says, the more that you perform an activity, a ratio will appear, right? And when you start to see those ratios of the highest value events, which in this case is an interview, you can almost predict the future. Welcome back to another episode of the Who You Know Show podcast. Well, what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. My name is Trevor Houston, and on this show, you'll learn the strategy, grit, and mindset it takes to overcome obstacles so you can level up in your career, recover your cash flow, and live the life of purpose that God intended for you. Don't forget to look at the mic drop moments timestamped in the show notes below. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to pay it forward Subscribe and leave an honest review so we can improve. Thanks for listening. My name is Trevor Houston, and please enjoy this episode of the Who You Know Show. We've got Julian Placino, who helps companies build trust online, generate leads, and sell by teaching the skills of content marketing. So why did you transition from recruiting to content strategy and being personal brand consultant? So as many of you know, my job has been helping candidates find the best opportunities in the marketplace and helping companies find the best talent. And that's what I did for 12 years. It was an incredibly rewarding career. For the last seven years of my corporate career, I oversaw hiring for a pretty amazing company called Bottle Rocket. And once a year, we did something called Rocket Science where we could build anything we wanted. And in 2016, for my Rocket Science project, I started my podcast, The Pathways to Success. Mm. And fast forward to present day, I produced 177 episodes. It's led to sponsorships, got signed by talent agency, got signed by speaking agency. And then eventually I built a consulting company, which replaced my income and set me on this mm. path of full-time entrepreneurship. So what it was over time, as you all for sure, a hundred percent know, was this, the benefits of having a personal brand. It allowed you to access people build trust and vastly expand your network. And I wouldn't have gained those insights if it wasn't for my podcast. And now I've packaged that into a program and now I teach sales and recruiters how to do that to perpetuate their own message in their own business. Yeah, it's kind of started as like a hobby or like you said. That like an experiment. Yeah, an experiment. Yeah, was in, and you know, the truth is, although I've been working a corporate career, I've been very entrepreneurial since I could remember. And I was always really frustrated in trying to find out what that identity was for me. And 2016, when I started this podcast, was the first time I ever started something just for the, for the pure love of it. Mm -hmm. And from that came all of this abundance. It allowed me to stop worrying about you know, money and acceptance and likes and things like that and just focus on the art. And from that, I got good at this one particular thing, gained these insights, and now I can use them to serve other people. Natural progression, it probably seemed like, doesn't it? It felt like a natural progression. Mm -hmm. And because it was coming from like this intersection, as I mentioned, like in the video of my, my, my natural strengths, areas of interest and value creation for others, when people started paying me to say things and do things that were within that intersection, it felt so organic. Because I know what it's like to sell something that you don't believe in. And I could just never do that. It was very organic. Yep. And I, I, I think in... Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you love what you're doing, you love doing it for others, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And when you do something you love, it seems to unlock the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And therefore you can present the best version of yourself and access to other people and really, you know, put your best into everything that you do. Man, how'd you get so polished? <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> you got that just, swagger. Hey, right. just polished, man. Yeah. You got and it's not man. polished in a way that's not authentic it's you it, it, it this is you and 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 like yeah. some people you can tell they're trying too dang hard you have this way of, of speaking that really is um it's really good man i gotta say well thank you very much i appreciate <laughs> it you know honestly it's a mixture of nature versus nurture and first off thank you for that comment but you know actually in the early days it um it got me it worked sort of against me like i heard one of the biggest criticisms i i got when i graduated from college because 
I was actually rejected 37 times in a row what? Okay. when I graduated from college trying to find my first corporate job. Uh -huh. But, you know, throughout that process, I was learning how to present in an interview, how to follow up, how to learn this, this job search process. And of course, the one company that made me an offer was Robert Half International, mm. and that started my recruiting career. Oh, okay. So instead of spending every waking hour of my day trying to find a job for myself, I then began a career helping other people do that. So, um, but yeah, in the beginning, the criticism was it seems over like too polished, and I can't tell if you're sincere, but that naturally is the way that I talk, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's part of the whole self-awareness piece also. It's like understand what your strengths are add skills to them and use them to help other people. So I love that. Did you guys hear that? To use them to help other people. God blesses us to help other people. You guys learn that. Yeah, we're all blessed yeah. to be a blessing, right? We you, are. That's exactly what it is. Do you all know Trey Bowles? I've heard that name. Yeah, like mm -hmm. huge in the entrepreneurial space. And I remember when I first started my entrepreneurial journey, um, I was asking for all sorts of advice to start a business. And he said, there's only one thing I need you to know right now. And that is know that God leased you talents. And it mm. is your job to discover them and use them to help other people. In my <laughs> 10 years of entrepreneurial journey, the reason why I kept failing is because I just kept putting money first. But the one time that I leveraged my strengths to try to help other people through the medium of the podcast, that's where the abundance came from. And that's why I'm so passionate about talking about personal branding. And part of personal branding is unearthing your unique talents and abilities. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't think they have a gift, but it's the truth. Everyone's oh, got everybody's one. Everybody's got one. Everybody. 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 You say a lot of things, that, but that's true to true blue right there. You have a couple of things that you're promoting right now, and you have a, a class or a course. Tell me about that. Yeah, sure. So I, I speak and I also consult on the topic of personal branding and specifically for recruiters and sales. And my background is recruiting and staffing, and that's why I'm so passionate about serving this particular area. It's because I know for the industry, historically, they've taught their salespeople how to sell, but not necessarily to market. And I feel like I have this unique confluence of experience in the industry and now branding that seems to really move the needle in helping them access their customers, right? So that is what I do. And one of the ways to find your life's task is identifying some of your natural inclinations, right? And for me, one of my natural inclinations was speaking. And what I found by doing my natural inclination, it gave me power and enthusiasm. So my question is this, think back and understand what are the activity or activities that you associate feelings of power with? I feel whenever you exercise your creativity muscle, it sort of draws out the best in you as well. And the truth is for my entire corporate career, I always just wanted to sort of fit in and, and fulfill other people's expectations of me. But, but where I saw the real like pathway to success was applying your own creativity and talents and apply it to like whatever it is that you're doing because you start to carve out your own unique way. And that's why I am really interested in anything that promotes creativity. Julie, I got a few more questions for you. I want to kind of go rapid fire here. Uh, number one tip for job seekers. Planning and execution. Something that I've learned in all of my career in terms of recruiting and sales is you must have a defined process. You must treat it like a system. 20, seven, three, and one. Line up 20 prospects, reach out to all of them. You'll probably connect with seven, interview with three, and land one. You can constantly fill your funnel throughout that process, but remember those numbers. Just like Jim Rohn says, the more that you perform an activity, a ratio will appear. Right, And when you start to see those ratios of the highest value events, which in this case is an interview, you can almost predict the future. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston. And if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know. Who you know.